Hello fellow YouTubers, this is Swan and Sparrow of the now Akuna Matata. Surprise! We got a new boat. It was gifted to us from a local sailor. He had uh, just wanted to see it taken care of and he didn't have the time um, to do it. And he wanted to see it done. So we went about taking the voyage across this waterway here, which is the Mobile Bay. And where we got it from is right about over there, diagonal to the pier. It is a Catalina 34. Let me get over this line right here and show you. It has been quite a trip to uh, even try to take care of this. Um, we've had two hurricanes come at us. We had uh, Sally, and then we had Zeta, which we never even expected to hit us. But when it did, it turned the pier and the marina into a war zone. As you can see, the uh, boats over there sunk. This boat right here turned into a battering ram against mine, and it is very large. It's around the same length as mine. And there is SV Akuna Matata. She's a wonderful boat. She made it through the hurricane okay. We snapped a repeated amount of lines. I don't know why I ever put that little line on there, but I was a little distraught when uh, I had this boy, big boy coming at me and providing damage to my side. It tore out my two lifelines and gouged my side repeatedly. Um, on top of that, when I had snapped my one line on this side, I went to try to loosen it, and I made the biggest mistake ever, which you never do before a hurricane, is tie your lines around this pole and have the loop on the cleat right there. That is the worst thing you could ever do. It gives you no opportunity to save yourself. You have to cut that line. Um, and the cost of cutting that line was the uh, beating that the bottom of the hull took from that pylon. Luckily, it was nothing but a, a proficient bottom job um, because the, the poles themselves are so rotten that it didn't do anything to them. But, on the other hand, some boats are not that lucky. If I would not have been on my boat, mine probably would have done the same thing as this one did. Now, you can see that pylon right there, how it's nice and shiny at the top. Brand new sand. That was brought to you by this boat in its position coming over to mine and slamming down onto the pylon. The water was up above that pylon right there. It had pulled it up out of that, or the boat up over that pylon and slammed the rear end down onto the pylon. So it essentially had picked it up just right and slammed it down. Now when that happened, it was, it was a prayer answered because I honestly bowed my head at that moment and said, Lord, just make this boat stop hitting me. And miraculously, it happened. It was a miracle that it happened because it had already snapped that little pile on right there. And where the boat originally was sitting, as we can see, it was looped around this pile on right here. It was nicely looped around that pylon right there. Um, wow, there's a spotlight in the water. Um, upon all this happening, I ended up salvaging a solar panel from the boat that tried to destroy mine. It just so happened to break loose on one of my lines and I go to pull it up and I was like, oh, there's a solar panel. Um, so now I do have a charging source. 24 volts. I'm going to convert it down to 12 volt. I'm going to show a video on how to do that. I've been researching it a little bit more.
um, on how to do that. Oh, there's the red line I was looking for. I have been looking for a red line for the last two days. Um, when I was trying to pull that solar panel up out of the water, it was not light because it had this bracket, as you can see, that bent. That was not bent like that. My boat did that. This is not thin tubing at all. These are not cordial brackets. Um, I would love to get a set of those to put on the back of mine because, I mean, they, they stood up. Um, it slammed into mine a few times to the point where my rigging came loose on one side and I'm like, I'm gonna die. <laughs> Apparently uh, somebody had called a rescue on somebody out here. They had seven police out by the end of the pier right there, lined across the wall, shining all of us. The portmaster is still trying to figure out who did it. Um, who called 911 because we're all honestly I'm kind of worried that if somebody was here if they're not sitting in the bottom of one of those two or three boats this one was dead empty and that one down there was dead empty um, upon all of this happening there was, there was another boat um, by a really cool guy here at the marina he owns uh, Cheers his name is Matt he had uh, the last Hurricane Sally, he had a Catalina 30 that had snapped off his furler, took his furler completely off the uh, front buckle, I'll show you on mine, um, it had taken the bottom buckle right there and snapped it completely loose and his furler was sitting up on the top of the pier, the pier they had just repaired um, when Sally hit and they just had to repair it again. And I will give you a little spiel of what the marina looks like now. Um, other than this wall coming down, I kind of thought there was no escape if my boat did sink. I was just gonna climb up the mast and sit there until the waves did come down and then run for my life to the end of the pier to land. <laughs> um, my phone was dead. It was one of the worst probabilities of anything thinking about happening when it did. Nobody was prepared for it at all. We just knew it was going to come. and It had said 75 mile an hour winds. And there was a lot more than that. <laughs> um, it veered a little to the right. I had somebody actually tell me that hurricanes... Every time they go near land, um, they veer. They tend to veer a little to the right, um, and the mass destruction of that was all of our electrical is now down. Um, my side was never working, anyways. <laughs> After Sally, it just kind of worked on the second outlet and that was it and now the second outlet is gone it, it has disappeared um in the middle of the storm we also had one called the gas guzzler it ended up in the yard of the fairhope yacht club um what else But yeah, it was it was a pretty interesting experience to actually ride through a hurricane on a boat. I have never done it. My brother Xander had a Irwin 42, and that was the love of his life. And I wish it was still around, and he was still around, because he'd be pretty proud that that's crazy enough to do it. Don't do it. I do not advise it. Do not try this at home. <laughs> but, uh... Here's the rest of it. That, that's my gateway right up there by the uh, building. The gateway is down. Um, it, it's a Tetris maze to get through. There's a fishing line tangled up everywhere. Um, the old boat, the Ranger, ended up getting sold to a couple of local guys in Pensac Pensacola, Florida. They ended up buying it for $200, and I told him, look, this this is a project boat. It is sternly a project boat. 
Um, I just wanted r literally what I put into it out of it, which was quite a lot, but I broke even uneven with $200 and it was, it was a good prayer, you know. He was going through a divorce and he needed a place to go and he needed a project to take over his mind. So I said, well, here's this project to take over your mind. Um, he had came over, got it with 30 horsepower outboard because there was a bracket on the back of it. We had an end up uh, mounting on there and he took off towards the shipping channel and I guess the bulkhead buckled because he didn't listen when I told him that he needs to take it over to Mobile and get the mask pulled off. He was just trying to brave it, be stubborn, and it didn't work out very well. Um, that being said, it was anchored right around the same place. We actually went past it, bringing the new boat in. Um, and that went through. when that went through, or when Zeta went through, it, I just got word that it pulled the Ranger clear down here to what they call the causeway, which is a big bridge that goes across the bay so nobody has to drive seven hours out of the way to get to Mobile, which is the city right over there by the uh, Pelican on the, on the pylon. And right over there, there's Swan. She's enjoying the boat because it's, it's still floating. I was, I was quite surprised yesterday because there, you see that little pole there, that was, that was the solar panel rack. Now, when the solar panel rack slammed into mine, my boat won for now, and it, it, it wanted karma. It did not like the fact that my boat beat it up. So, it was trying to rub a hole in the bottom of my boat. Now, luckily, that solar panel that was right there and the rack that it was attached to the bolts weren't tight, number one, and, oof, there's a dent there. Um, <laughs> number two, the uh, rack was rubbing on it just enough at the tide. The tide had gotten lower, and it had kind of set the boat down onto the solar panel just a little bit and was actually scraping the bottom for me in that location that we have seen so far. So I'm glad and thankful for that. By the way, uh, Mr. Mike, I have found your ladder. <laughs> it was in the back of the boat. Um, I was currently using that when uh, we were at war with the solar panel um, to get Swan back and forth on, to, on and off of the boat because I didn't want either one of us falling into water. And I tended to overstretch myself last night when I went to try to get on and the lines were just loose enough to stretch my entire right side to the point I really believed in yoga. Um, but everything so far is good. I did end up having not only the lifelines stanchions snap. Surprise here. My rear cleat ripped out when that boat went on that pylon and you see how far it actually went it went clear down to here and in, up into the boat and then it pulled itself back out actually here's some fiberglass in the top of it still stuck there's there's chunks of the bottom of that boat um so in the result i had to in an emergency situation tie onto my wench because my rear cleat was gone when that happened, the following roller wave from the seven foot one that tried to take us out tore my winch out. So now I'm going to have an instructional video on how to uh, repair the winch system or a fiberglass repair because I've been studying that and with the cascade I had quite a bit of uh, experience with that along uh, with uh, Sailing views, Zane. Mr. Zane has taught me a lot. I've kind of adopted him as a guiding figure to help me 
a lot through the boating life. Um, when Xander died, I kind of stepped away from the boating life for a little while and didn't get much of a, a pickup from there. So now it's Zane's been teaching me a lot and the guy that I actually ended up helping out gave the kind and hoping word to a friend of his that had uh, worked on me with this beautiful boat and we made it happen. Um, thankfully that I have this boat and I'm going to take care of it and refit it all. The interior needs refitted. It's just been sitting there for eight years. Um, and there, there was a spot in there that had termites. It was the kitchen counter, the countertop. It was plywood, so they loved that because of the, the humidity that the refrigerator had. So I ended up finding a little nest. It, it was nowhere near the size of uh, the Cascades. It was literally a three-inch triangle um, in the corner of the refrigerator. And it, it wasn't too bad at all um, with the motor on this one. I would have loved to make videos, but I was just too busy trying to get this in progress to get it going. And I had an issue with my phone where the battery wouldn't last more than, you know, 30 minutes. Um, so we ended up switching out batteries and getting a new battery for it. Um, but the engine, I ended up... Uh, it was airlocked for a while because the fuel pump ended up uh, going out. Or yeah, the fuel pump ended up going out. Thankfully, Zane from Sailing Views actually donated a fuel pump to us to get it moved across the bay. And it, it was a fun trip. Um, the first stretch that I tried to take, I tried to take alone. Um, and leaving the marina, I was only doing one point... I think 1.8 knots, which is very slow at full throttle on a 21 horsepower diesel. It is a universal diesel with a brand new prop eight years ago. And uh, so I sat there and I thought about it and the bottom need cleaned. So I ended up getting towed from a local guy that uh, has came across our life. His name is uh, Frank. He's got a big trawler. He pulled us all the way from over there, halfway across the bay, and then we took it from there to see how our foot would go. Swan ended up getting her first uh, jib raise, and it, we lowered the jib as soon as we got into irons, and we were coasting around four knots. So we figured, you know, a good uh, bottom cleaning We'll haul it out one day and scrape the bottom, probably sand it down and repaint it. I'll be about, you know, three-day job. Uh, probably around.